So first of all, I want to thank everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself in the beginning, but I would like to start off saying how grateful I am to have this opportunity. So, Joe, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to everyone. It's a, it's a real pleasure. It's always an honor. All right, so um, my name is Rich Perconi, and I don't have a gift. I wasn't born with a gift. I don't have a special gift. I'm going to speak today about all of us, that we all have a spirit. And I'm going to share my story about discovering the fact of how my spirit works. Everything is based on God. Everything is based on a, a wisdom that's outside of my own. And so I was raised Catholic. You know, I grew up into this world, and I have a Catholic upbringing. So a belief in God, a belief that I had a spirit, a belief that um, there's Jesus that plays a big loving role in our life. And so after elementary school, I would go to special Bible classes uh, to fulfill my obligations to the Catholic religion. And as time went on and I got older, I got involved in martial arts. I had my own martial arts business. After that, I went into the police department. So early on in my police career, you know, of course, everybody starts off like, uh, as a patrolman. And in that way, I kind of quickly graduated where I got to work with the prosecutor's office, which is a kind of step up from my municipal police department. And in there, I got introduced to doing undercover work. And so after my year uh, of uh, participation in the prosecutor's office and learning the, to do the undercover work, I went back to the police department and I took a role in the Narcotics Bureau and obtained the rank of detective in a pretty short amount of time, probably around four years. During that time also, uh, they allowed me or they asked me and I was honored to be part of the emergency response team, which is the old SWAT team uh, analogy or the, the acronym. And so in that way, my life was martial arts, law enforcement, undercover work, and also you know, being on the emergency response team. So it's a big difference in what I do now. It's a huge difference. So I have so many experiences about being inside the police department and working in the narcotic field and being in places and situations that people shouldn't regularly be. So it was in situations that where I could have very easily either lost my life or at least my safety could have been greatly endangered. And so as time went on and I continued to grow in this direction, I was now probably like in my early 40s. And as much as you want to say you're successful in your careers, as much as you want to say you're successful in life, I think that one of the most important things that was happening to me at this particular time in my early 40s was the fact that there's a different kind of success that I learned, which is your spiritual success. It's about being happy. It's about learning how to live in peace. It's about learning how to have love in your life. It's about a unity that's established. And so, in my early 40s, I didn't have any of that. I was divorced. I was by myself. I was living in the first floor of an apartment of a two-story home. There was people that were living above me. Uh, I was tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I was separated from my daughter, and I was miserable. Very, very confused. And so I realized that during this time that it's not the way I wanted to proceed forward. I... I started speaking the truth to myself, realizing that it was me that got me there. Now, I called upon my belief in God. And so, in that way, realizing that I couldn't do life by myself, I started relying on my belief that a God existed. And so, in that venue, inside of that journey, what I began doing is that I started seeking the possibility that God existed and I could establish a communication with the spiritual wisdom that was outside of my own. And so I had no idea how to do it. I didn't have a clue. And so when I started looking at uh, a true assessment of my life, I realized there was, there was two different ways that I received, I'm going to call a source of wisdom or a knowledge about life. My first way and the most primary way was the influence that I had when I was a kid growing up. People taught me to think. And so if there was a situation or a problem where something arose, I would now think about it. I would try to come up with answers so that I can make the right choice. And very often this led to confusion. I got confused because I couldn't understand what the right choice was. I would worry. 
I got stressed out. Or I would think for many, many hours, maybe even into my night's sleep that was interrupted, I felt like I was living in torment on different moments. There was other moments where I could know the truth. I could feel it inside of here. And in that way, when I said I could feel something, I knew the truth about something, or I could sense the truth in something, I realized that wasn't my brain. That wasn't me thinking. So I said, what if that's my spirit? What if nobody ever told me that this is how it works? What if nobody ever told me that there's a language of God, which is the same as the language of my spirit? And it made sense if God was a spiritual energy or a spiritual source of wisdom and a spiritual source of love. And I came from that spiritual image that my spirit had the ability of still staying connected with God. And so I went on my own little journey just to see if it was the truth. And so my first step, which was the most difficult challenge of my life, was learning how to quiet my mind. My first step that if this was true, my journey was learning how to quiet my brain. And so so I'm so used to interacting with life and trying to get the understanding about life and the understanding about love and the understanding about a spiritual God, if a God existed, by thinking about it. And what if that's not the way? What if people just didn't teach me the right way? And so I grew up, even though I grew up with a faith or having a belief in there's a God, I was still skeptical about the other side. I was still skeptical about how does God exist in our life? How does the spiritual wisdom, how does love actually work? And now, for the first time, I was being skeptical about how I was raised, about the influence of our society, about the influence of the people around me. I was now holding that up to a higher scrutiny. And not to disprove anyone, just to improve my life, hoping there was a better way than what I was taught. And so inside of that way, I learned how to quiet my mind, which I couldn't do. So it lasted for like 15 seconds or 30 seconds, and then my mind would kick right back and say, well, let me tell you what we think about this. And so inside of that way, I realized that even if I could do it for 15 seconds, it's the fact that I could do it. I also realized that in in my life, the way I was living it, is that there was an alignment that occurred. I was trying to interact with life and interpret life by thinking. So I was living mind, body, spirit last. And now I wanted to change it. If I really had a spirit, maybe it was about the alignment. Maybe I shouldn't be interpreting life with my mind. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to understand life with my mind. Maybe it's my spirit that should be interpreting life. And so I looked at it in such a way where, again, learning how to shift my spirit to the forefront of my life, it was a personal self-evolvement that I could do on my own. It wasn't something I needed other people to do. And very often, you know, in our, in our society, Things get done for us. People build our own houses. People build cars for us. There's a grocery store. I don't have to pick my own food. But I quickly realized that nobody can help me grow my own spirit. Nobody can help me make that communication between me and a source of wisdom outside of my own. I had to do it myself. And so I went on that journey. So I learned how to live spirit, mind, and body. And when I did so... When I started quieting my mind, I would ponder the moment or contemplate the moment that I was experiencing. And the most incredible thing happened. I realized that whenever I made my mind completely quiet, a natural peace came over me. It wasn't something I asked for. It wasn't something that I said, okay, when I quiet my mind, I want peace to come. It just naturally occurred. So I looked at this as a positive thing. Again, just pondering life. Being aware of the moment that when I quieted my mind, a natural peace came over me. So I looked at it in such a way that if there is, really is a spiritual God and there's a design to our life in a spiritual way that's meaningful for the, purpose, for the purpose of growing our spirit, this would be a good sign to me. So now what I was learning is that I was learning faith. Not a belief system anymore. It wasn't about me believing what somebody else said or what was written in a book. It was me having faith to follow what I believed in to validate whether or not it was the truth or not. And again, not putting anybody down, just my own self-discovery. And so inside of that way, I started following and I started having more faith. And the more I, the more I placed faith, the more I found that I was trusting in a source of wisdom outside of my own. I also had to find the self-courage. So I realized that faith, trust, and self-courage, that makes perfect sense when it comes to faith and, and trust, 
in a wisdom outside of my own that I had to achieve that? What if it was just really low? What if my mind could just talk me out of being in spirit? And so I went on that little journey, and it got better and better and better and better. Eventually what happened is that I learned to quiet my mind. And when I learned to quiet my mind, I then reached a state of stillness. And when I can make myself still inside, and my mind didn't overrule me and go back to thinking, I realize a self-accomplishment. And so inside of that way, I said, well, what actually, what part of me made my mind quiet? And I realized that there's three different strengths inside of our body. My brain has mental strength, very, very strong. It could dictate my life and tell me which direction it wanted to go into. My body had a physical strength. I realized that I could build my body up and grow muscles and grow my, endurity, uh, my endurance and grow my uh, agility. I also realized that if I really did have a spirit, there had to be a strength connected to my spirit. And what if that's my will? What if it's that's my will to place me in alignment with my spirit being first in the forefront of my life so that if there's a language of God, which is in the language of my spirit, I can go and grow that. And so I looked at it and it made sense to me that if I wasn't using my spirit for most of my life, my will, my strength was very, very strong and was very, very weak. And I needed to get it stronger. I needed to enhance it. And it made perfect sense to me. So now I went on my own little journey. The peacefulness started growing. I started paying attention to my life more. I started being at peace in my life more. I started learning how to truly love myself, take a personal interest in my own life. I started realizing that it wasn't me trying to change other people anymore. Maybe I was just supposed to try to change myself. I also realized that I was giving control up over my life. I realized that I wasn't now just claiming sole ownership of it. So in the big part of my life, the first 40 years, the first 44 years, I would just try to control everything. I wanted to control the people around me. I wanted to control my path in life. I wanted to control my job. I wanted to control my finances. I wanted things the way I wanted them. What, what if that's not true, though? What if that's not what we're supposed to do? What if there really is a God and we're supposed to give up control so that we're part of a greater whole. And when I started doing that, giving up ownership of my life, welcoming an outside source of wisdom, if it's true, I started not feeling alone anymore, whereas before I always did. There was a sense of unity that started happening to me, a natural sense of unity. Now, at this point, I think I'm going crazy. <laughs> because it's not something that we normally talk to or talk about in society. We don't talk about this with our family. We'll talk about the television shows. We'll talk about our experiences. But the things that's so important to us, love, our spirit, God, we don't talk about them enough. But seek the understanding of how it was created. And so that's what I was learning to do. I was learning how to surrender myself, and that's the key word of surrendering myself, to a wisdom that I haven't had yet or I didn't possess yet. There is no greater validation than watching your own life and watching it all work out. You can't escape the truth. And so that's how I looked upon it. I couldn't do my life well for the first 44 years. And now I was starting to learn a different way that could produce a better outcome. And so, again, looking at it in such a way where I was developing myself, I, I looked at it in like a self-evolvement. Maybe that's what we're supposed to do in life. Maybe our life is all about having experiences, and in those experiences, we make choices. But starting to discover where our source of wisdom should come from to make those choices. Most of my source of wisdom would come from here, trying to get my brain to figure out life. But what if I had the ability of just knowing the truth? What if I didn't have to think? What if my source of wisdom was meant to be here? What if my life center that lived up here all these years that I was taught what if it's supposed to be here? What if I can have, or we all have the ability of opening ourselves up to giving up the control over our life, surrendering ourselves to a source of outside of wisdom where we show faith and trust in that source and, said, in that source and just say, I'm going to follow and I'm going to show you that I have the strength, the will, to be in alignment with that source of wisdom. To me, I was learning how to get in alignment with a spiritual God or the wisdom of God, or the divine wisdom of God. But again, validation was key. 
I just didn't want to speak words to people. Not that I wanted to speak to people. I just didn't. I wanted to go and actually validate it in my life by watching my life shift. And so inside of that way, here's me being an undercover cop, going to work and feeling as if it wasn't just good enough to be at peace and remain in a quietness and to receive a wisdom outside of my own in the comforts of my own home. What if, my, what if I was just minimizing my spirit? What if I was minimizing God by saying, well, this is all I can do? So I opened myself up. Can I do it at work? Can I go to my job and live in, in such a way where I interact with people at my job, still be at peace, and still have a center of wisdom where I'm welcoming help and having the faith and trust and self-courage to follow that. And so, again, my own self-evolvement, pertaining to my own life. It's like I gave that wisdom, that divine wisdom, an opportunity to prove itself. Just saying, I'm going to follow whatever it is. And so I found my jobs got better. I found that I could see when somebody had a gun on them or didn't have a gun on them or where the drugs were going to be or if I was going to be set up when it came to say, a drug transaction. I could see it beforehand. I also could see, I started seeing um, the ability of recognizing how to speak in life. So I realized that my first step in all of this was changing my source of wisdom. My first step in all this was showing a faith that I had a spirit, that there is a wisdom outside of my own that's divine, and to surrender my life or giving up control over my life to that wisdom. When I became what I consider more in spirit, where my life center went to here instead of being up here, I started learning how to interpret sources of energy. So here's what I mean by that. My brain never picked up on our loved ones on the other side. My brain was never capable of picking up on medical imbalances inside of people. My brain was never being able to communicate or to receive a knowledge on how love works, how it's the greatest form of communication between all people and understanding how it works. It got confused if I tried to access it for that knowledge. My spirit could, though. For the first time in my life, seeing the difference, I started being able to understand or interpret the meaning behind other sources of energy. And that sources of energy, it didn't matter. It could be a building. It could be a person. It could be our loved ones on the other side. It could be a spiritual God. It could be someone who's very angelic. It could be my future. It could be my past. What if there's a language of God and there's a language of our spirit and we all came from that same spiritual image that we are mutually connected? that nobody just taught us there's a different way in life. And so I realized to go on in this direction, again, just opening my life up to the truth, giving it a chance to prove itself. And so being at work and watching my my life turn around at work and watching my jobs work out and watching when I knew things, that was validation for me. Also seeing or realizing how I should speak. I started using words that I never used before. I spoke more about love, more about my spirit. I spoke more about God. I spoke more about um, learning how to quiet your mind, the development of how love is always helpful. I started changing my words around, and I realized that wasn't me. I didn't do that. I didn't change that for 44 years, and now I was. So seeing the difference in myself was key. As time went on, I I started realizing that this alignment made total sense to me. That if I just wasn't including my spirit in my life, it made sense on why I wasn't picking up on sources of energy. What if we're all supposed to live our life this way? What if that's the way we were supposed to live our life? What if my parents said, hey, Rich, when I was very, very young, started off when I was a small child, said, you have a spirit in your life. Let me share with you how it works. Let me tell you when the things that you know inside, that's not, that, that, that doesn't come from you, that comes from another source, it's being helpful to your life. And so, in that way, how would I have changed or how would I have been if I learned from a younger age? What if my parents just knew about love and how it all worked? And they explained it to me. 
rather than me learning about other things in life, you know, being outside and learning how to, you know, play football and baseball. And not that that's not an important thing, but isn't this also important? I realize that there is, I realize that love is so important in our life that we'll change our lives for love. Whether it be the love of our animals, the love of the people in our life, the love of our family, the people that we choose, it's key. And I realize if you ask me to write what love is, I couldn't tell you. I didn't have a clue. I couldn't tell you the grand scheme of things about it. And so opening yourself up to allowing your spirit, I felt like I had a spiritual parent. I felt like there was a knowledge outside of me that was always there. It was me that was blocking it. It was me that was interrupting that flow of knowledge. And it was all about me. One of, your, one of the biggest things that happened to you or happened to me is fear. What if I'm off about all this? What if I'm just really going crazy? What if the people around me, it's not common in society, and society don't want to hear about your spirit, including my own family, my personal family. They don't want to hear about that stuff. Their first impression is, you're crazy. But I looked at it as this. I'm a work in progress. Maybe so are they. Maybe that we all, because when we don't include our spirit in our life, we're not in spirit, we don't have that wisdom or that knowledge, we don't give it an opportunity to share it with us. Maybe we lose faith in a wisdom outside of our own, or we'd rather do other things. And so in that way, if my parents were a work in progress, if society is a work in progress, much like me, I looked at it as that maybe they just don't have the understanding that they're capable of. And so inside of that way, I started looking at people differently. I started realizing that before I would say, you're wrong about this, you're wrong about that, that's not right about this, and look what you did here and here and here and here and here. Now I was changing. It's almost like my perspective of life started changing. It's almost like if there's a spiritual God who says, let me show you my perspective. Let me show you how it all works. And so my perspective started changing. And in that way, I always wanted to be helpful. I realized that I incorporated in my life that everybody's a work in progress that they came from a family that didn't include their spirit. They had that same kind of upbringing. And so now they were just a reflection of the level of wisdom that they've grown in their own personal life. And when I looked at that, that they were just a reflection of their own level of wisdom, their own level of love, their own level of goodness, it's not something that you criticize people for, because I'm the same way we all are. It's a way of now realizing, how can I be helpful to them? And here's what I learned. All the times in the past, I try to change people. It didn't work. I would tell this person what to do and tell that person what to do and come across here and be demanding about this and share this with someone and tell that. And none of it worked. What I started to realize is that the way energy works, real spiritual energy, it's always inspirational. We don't try to change other people. We change ourselves. And so if I'm changing myself, If my words start to develop and they start to change, if my presence becomes different, if my ability to express myself in a loving way and have wise words, have a a wiser understanding about life, what I realize is that moments got created for me. Again, learning how to surrender my life. Moments already got created for me and said, okay, Rich, in this particular moment, now share your wisdom with this person. And in that way, what I realized was this. It was always welcoming. I wasn't trying to change people's lives. I offered suggestions. I wanted to be helpful. I shared an understanding about life that could be of assistance to them. But I never wanted to change them. It made sense that the same thing with me, that in the first time when you're growing your spirit, you surrender yourself to a different outside wisdom. The first time you discover that wisdom, you start to understand how the language of God and the language of your spirit actually works you begin to realize that it was just me that was cutting myself off from it. It was me that was preventing myself from picking it up in the first place. And so inside of that way, now I started to realize that it was always there. But it didn't fault me for not talking to it earlier or including my spirit or showing my faith or showing my trust the way I should have. It didn't fault me. It just said, Rich, I was just waiting. When you took the time in your life to open yourself up that it's the spiritual connection to me that I was just waiting for, I was always here for you. 
You know what was amazing too? How many times I doubted God? I doubted what source of wisdom. I doubted my spirit. You know how many times my mind said, that's nonsense what you just felt. I don't care if it's the truth or not. We can't speak this in this moment because what if people don't like us? What if people don't recognize what we say, even though it's the truth? And so I never considered or not whether or not that wisdom, that knowledge of me knowing when to speak the truth and how to speak the truth, that I was just getting, I was looking at God and going, I don't believe in you. I'd rather care more about people and what they think of me than what you think of me. And so now I started changing my life differently. I started opening myself up that it was always there. I started realizing how love actually works. It didn't fault me for what I didn't do in the past. It just said, Rich, I've been growing myself and just waiting for you. And my knowledge is even greater than it was before. And when you're ready to go and open your life up and listen to me, I'm here for you and I'm going to do it through your own spirit. This is how I communicate. And so I realized the same thing with other people. So I speak in such a way where I'm being helpful. But it's them that have to open themselves up to welcome what I have to say. So it's been a great journey to go along and discover how your spirit works. So let me just share a little bit about what I consider to be the language of God and the language of our spirit. Let me go back to what I said to you earlier about spiritual energy. So my mind doesn't have the ability to interpret spiritual energy. Your spirit does. And so inside that way, it's a whole different language. The language of your spirit and the language of what I consider to be a divine wisdom outside of my own is based on what I sense, what I know, what I understand, not what I think. And in all of what I sense, I can sense the truth. I have the ability of understanding the truth. I have the ability of knowing the truth. And so when I was pondering about life, I realized that this wasn't thinking that I just have the ability to know the truth. And I just haven't grown it. Like I said, the will of my spirit was weak to focus on the growth of my spirit. My mind would always dominate because I grew it so much. My brain and my mind would always dominate and talk me out of that my spirit actually existed. And so now I was learning this language. And so the first thing that happened to me was a wisdom. I just talked to what I consider to be a source of outside wisdom that was, um, that was not mine. And I did it for about a year and a half. Every day, whether I after work or before work or when I wasn't working, I showed a faith and I showed a trust and I showed a self-commitment and I showed a self-courage. I learned how to build up the strength of my spirit, what I considered the strength of my spirit, and quiet my mind. Now, instead of my mind dictating it, it was now my spirit was growing and saying, let me tell you where you're at. You're number two. You're second. Where well, I couldn't do that before. And so I was learning that my spirit was now interpreting truthful energy. The truth. Not the illusions my mind would create, or not the falsehoods, or it could be this, or it could be this, or it could be this. It was only one response. It was only one receiving message. This is the truth. And so inside of that way, because I was doing that, I wasn't thinking as much. I was now living more at peace. Because I wasn't asking my mind to try to figure out life. The confusion went. The worry left. The stress went away. I realized these were all responses to when I didn't understand the truth in some way, and these are the responses that I got. And I, and I would duplicate those moments where I got more of those responses. Anger went away. There's all a, an understanding behind it all. And it all has to do with love and all has to do with the truth. And so, inside of this way, as I'm learning better to surrender myself to this language, as I'm learning to develop myself, I would grow in such a way <clears throat> where I now started, after communicating with a source of outside of wisdom for like about a year and a half, I now started, without even trying and even knowing what was going on, I started seeing medical imbalances inside of people. People would walk up to me, friends, and all of a sudden I would start to receive messages. I start to receive visions. I start to receive images. I start to receive words. I start to receive a feeling. I start to receive a sense. All that wasn't thinking. And so, and inside of that way, I again show faith and trust that this was the truth. I just wasn't taught this when I was a kid, and now at 44 years of age, I'm learning to do it. But validation was key. So I would validate it with the person. Again, they were friends. They weren't strangers. Saying, does this make sense, what I'm seeing about you? And it always made sense to them, and it was always the truth. And so I'm like, I'm amazed. So again, this was a language to me. 
then I started talking to people that no longer were connected to us in life. That I was raised that people die. I looked at the body and the brain of no longer being able to sustain life as death. I never included the spirit. I never included that God is a spirit. I never included that I had a spirit. And what if it just wasn't true the way I was taught that that the spirit dies? What if the spirit can't die? What if God created a world for us where your spirit can't die, but it just lives differently? And so as I started communicating with loved ones, I also realized that it was all based on love. It was all based on them speaking the truth. It was also amazing to me that they didn't think anymore because they didn't have a brain. They didn't have that dichotomy where they were listening to their spirit and all of a sudden the brain kicked in and said, yeah, but we're not going to tell the truth today. Even though I know this is the truth, this is not what we're going to do. It was gone. Whatever level of wisdom, whatever level of love, whatever level of goodness you've achieved here, it was in your spirit here on this earth, and when you don't have a body anymore, it's still within your spirit. I learned that it's actually one life that the spirit has. Spirit goes from body to body to body, whether you believe this or not. I'm just going to share with you my experience. Spirit has one life. It goes in and out of bodies. It's for the development. It's for so that we have a challenge in our life. We have choices here on this earth. Why? Take away the brain, there's no choice. You always follow your spirit. But when you incorporate the brain inside of the body, again, looking at why God created us in such a way, when you look at the spirit being placed in the body, why did God create it that way? It gives us choice. Do we follow what we think is true or do we follow what we know, sense, and feel and understand is true? Do we follow the loving thing in life or do we allow our brain to talk us out of doing the loving thing? Do we follow the truthful approach in life or do we allow our brain to talk us out of the truth? There's a reason for it on why we have to make the right choice. Again, it grows the will of our spirit. And so I noticed a difference and being open to just the truth, I started following it. It was always the end result of me talking to loved ones on the other side was always the truth. And again, me questioning it, saying this, this can't be real. But when the names and the details come out about people's lives and what they did and the injuries they had and what they went through, you realize they really aren't dead. It made sense to me that that's how God created everything. We really don't kill anything. Our bodies eventually fade away, but our spirit always lives. It's amazing how love works. So, last thing. So I realized that when it came to communication, there was two, there was two forms of communication that I was following that I felt like I was being geared or directed more towards. And one is love, and one is the truth. So I can be the most loving person in the world, and that means I'm helpful. That means if I'm critical, if I tell you what to do, if I put you down, if I bring out all your faults, that's not loving. I'm not being helpful to your life. But if I, pri if, if I provide you with an insight and a wisdom that just makes sense, like I'm doing here today, and you resonate with it, it makes sense to you. I'm being helpful to your life, but you always, make the, you always have to make the decision in the end. You always have to choose how you want to live your life. And so I realized that most of the things that I have inside of life aren't mine. God created all this. He created the trees to make our homes. He created the metals in the ground to make our cars. He created the ability of the earth to make the vegetables. He created my body, my brain, my spirit. I, I don't have say in any of that. But what I do have say is what life I create for myself and how that life is a true reflection of me. It's my only creation. It's the only thing that I can say is absolutely mine. What kind of life am I creating for myself? And so I realize that love is key. If I can be the most loving person in the world, but if I don't speak the truth, if I don't share a wisdom with you, it doesn't work. The only thing that love does is that it pauses people to open themselves up to a loving presence, to listen to what I might have to say. At the very same time, if I speak wisdom, but I yell it at you, or I scream it at you, or I'm critical with it, I'm not being loving, and you're not listening to me, even though it may make complete sense and change your life for the better, but you combine them both together. You combine loving with speaking the truth together. That's the most effective communication that I've ever seen. So when I stand before you in this podium and I'm now speaking the insight that I have about life, I hope I came through in a loving way. I hope I did my, I know I did my best, and I hope that it resonated with you in some way about me speaking the truth or my knowledge about 
how I shifted my life or manifested a better life for myself in such a way where I now live with more peace, I now live with more happiness, I now live with more love, I now live with more wisdom than I ever have. And the only thing I changed differently was I included my spirit in my life. Does anybody have any questions about anything? I'm not even quite sure if my time is up or not, but I feel like I'm supposed to stop. Well, thank you for starting. Thank you. <laughs> we'll open for a while of just questions uh, from the floor and before we go around the table. So let's take a little while of questions and answers. So things that spoke to you, you can direct them to Yes? Yeah. Does anyone say you look like serpent, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the second was, uh, what was the reaction of your fellow officers, and are you still in the force? So I'm not on the force anymore. So I retired from the police department after 27 and a half years. And I recognize that all people aren't, aren't open to what I might have to say. So I didn't go out of my way to preach to anyone. I didn't go out of my way to try to convince someone that this new life that I was now pursuing was the truth. At the same time, I wasn't ashamed of what I was going through. So if somebody actually asked me if it actually came up, then I spoke the truth. But otherwise, I kept to my own life, my own self-progression, my own spiritual involvement, and I let people live life the way that they chose. But I wasn't ashamed if it came up, absolutely. Yes? Hi, Rob. I've been trying to understand Pierre Richardon's concept of integration of evolution with spirituality. Yeah. And listening to you, I'm thinking, yeah. Our it's almost like that has been a barrier. Yep. That it's really something we almost we've evolved into, and it's really not for the goodness of spirituality. I mean, I don't know how to say it any other way. You know what's amazing to me? Again, this is just me pursuing, like, I've never read a book on any of this. I've never had any mentors at all or teachers. So everything I share with you is based on my own self-development, being self-taught. And so inside that way, me pursuing the truth, just seeing if this is really true, if I really can do this, if this is the way that I was supposed to live growing up, if I was taught properly to include my spirit in my life. And so I started going, I started communicating with, when I started communicating with people um, that just don't have bodies anymore. They're very much alive, full of life. It's just absolutely awesome. But when I would record the conversations and get their voices, I realized that they didn't have lungs. They didn't have a brain. They didn't have a mouth to speak with. And so in that way, when they answered in a very uh, effective way and they answered my questions and now I've got this physical evidence in front of me to back up what I know to be true. Again, just opening myself up to the truth. Not saying, hey, I don't want to believe that and I don't want to pursue it. I was interested in opening myself up to the truth. If God really created all this in such a way, there's got to be a beautiful meaning behind it all. And the, the knowledge that, he, that I was shared with, the wisdom that I was shared with, it all made sense because it would all fit. That if people really weren't alive on the other side, if that was the end of life when we died and our body ceased to exist, there wouldn't be any communication. It wouldn't happen. But it was very much, it was very much true. So I agree with you is that I think in our society, and I think it's great that people sh should pursue their own life, the brain is very big. I think there's a lot of misconceptions based on the knowledge that I, that I know and the, what was being shared with me and the validation, most important, the validation in my life. I watched my life shift where I couldn't do it before. And all I did was include my spirit. And I know there's a lot of people in my family and other, and other people that I know, they just don't want to pursue that. And I watch, I watch how they struggle in life, to have the happiness and the peace and the love. There's a unity in my family that never existed. I was telling you I was divorced before. And so later on, as I changed myself, I reunited with my ex-wife and we actually started, we actually remarried two years ago. And so seeing that... <laughs> so what I share with people is just the truth. I couldn't do, I didn't understand love because I came from a source that they didn't, under, that they taught me what they knew. And it's not bad or good. It's just 
it was ineffective when it came to having a loving relationship. And so in that way, I changed myself. And then the knowledge that I ended up sharing with Michelle along the way, because we shared a daughter in common, made sense to her. She started making changes in herself. It was the way it was meant to be in the very, very beginning. So it's important to see the validation inside of your life, not just to speak the words and say this works. It's, a, it's the validation. And it always comes back to there's a spiritual wisdom outside of ourself. Love is key. There's a universal language. If everybody quiets their mind in here, if everybody in the world quiets their mind, a natural peace will come over every single person. It won't be something you ask for. It'll just occur. Also, love is the key to all communication. Try yelling at someone. Try pointing your finger and telling somebody what they went wrong and screaming at them and see if you don't energetically push them away from you. And then try a different way where you're giving someone a wisdom and an understanding to be beneficial to their life and see if energetically and spiritually they don't move towards you. It's, it's the most amazing thing when you sit back and you realize that we have experiences where we see the proof of this every day in our life. We just don't ponder life or aware of life the way that we should be. But I agree with you about the spiritual growth. Yep, absolutely. Yes? Oh, so now I do, let me share with you the end part. So I do spiritual events now. So I do actual, I'll go to places, gal, I do call them galleries, where there'll be 20 people in the room. I have a couple coming up where there's 50 people in the room. And I don't know, probably like 99% of the people. You know, there's always someone that heard of me before and, they've, you know, I, I've helped them in life in some way and they've come back over and over again like Sue here. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> And so, um, and so what I'll do is that I'll connect them with the people that, their loved ones from the past. Now, when I first started doing this, I didn't believe any of it. I was like, there's no way in all this is working. And the first time that it ever happened to me, I had no idea. Because I was raised that there's evil, there's Satan, there's the devil. And so I was raised in that way that all that truly existed. And so how do I know that I wasn't opening myself up to something along that line? But having self-courage and having a faith to see whether or not, again, being skeptical about the way I was taught. Open myself up to the truth. And so opening myself up to the truth, for the very first time I got connected with someone that I hadn't talked to in years, that I had to go and make a phone call to that person and have the faith and just go, will you please just listen to me? You might think I'm crazy. You might, I have so many stories. You might think I'm crazy. But I want to share something with you. If it's not true, hang up on me. And what I learned is that if I'm being guided to do something, as long as I have the faith, the trust, and the self-courage, I become enlightened. I show a will of my spirit to be aligned with the will of spiritual God. And if I'm being guided to do something, it's always going to work out for me. And so the key is knowing how to make that alignment first. And then learning how to follow it, again, giving up control over your life where you don't feel alone anymore, you feel like you're being guided. I could never duplicate that experience in a million years. But when I surrendered myself to an outside love, to an outside help, that's exactly the kind of experiences I've had to this day, where I didn't for the first 44 years of my life. Yes? Uh, you mentioned that you've had a child. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering how before and after you have uh, looked at raising your children and in what ways it's different? You know, what's so great, and thank you very much for asking that question. It's an absolutely great question. So what happens is that, you know, the most important people to us are the people that we choose to share our life with. So I look at life now is that everybody's responsible for their individual life. Everybody's a guest to one another. We don't have to share our life with anyone. We can do it very much on our own. And so when we choose to bring a child into this world, we now hold the responsibility of saying, I have a wisdom and a good understanding about how love works, and I can share with you how to make your life grander than mine. And I couldn't do that before. Now I did. So when moments came up where she had questions about relationships or questions about what direction she should go into life, what she should choose to spend the rest of her life in, I can now give her a direction and encourage her own self-growth to make the right decisions. I can also give her the right decisions when she needs it the most. Because now I can see the truth where I couldn't do that before. Just because I just don't think the way I used to. I don't interact with life the way that I used to. And everybody can do this. 
And so inside of that way, we watch her life. Michelle and I watch her life prosper where it didn't before. Her life is just flowing in such a way where she goes from one good experience to the next, to the next, to the next. We're super proud of her. If, she, if you ever talked to her, you would just say, like, listen to the wisdom that comes out of this young girl's mouth. It would be, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Any other questions? You're awesome. Thank you so much for having me here today. It was a real pleasure.